how to read and write a JSON file with C++ in Unreal. In Unreal, there's multiple ways you can generate and edit the JSON files, but today I'm going to show you the way I think it's the simplest one with the help of structures. So let's get to it. But before we can start, today's video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the previous videos on how to read and write text files. I'm going to add the link of that video in the description, but if you don't want to go and watch it, here is the code. And now we can start the video for real, so let's get to it. So as usual, I have a pretty empty class right here, and we're going to add ourselves some functions to read and write JSON files. And to do that, we're going to use the class fjson object, which is the name of the class that is used inside Unreal to create JSON objects. And now for our function, we're going to start with the function that reads a JSON file. So as input, I'm feeding it the JSON file I want to read. So it's just a text file. And then I have two other variables, a two output variable to give more information to the user, but you can ignore them if you don't want them. And then as return, I'm returning the JSON object that is created while reading the file. And then we have the function that writes the JSON file. So here it is, uh, same as the previous function, I have to feed it the path of the file I want to write this time. So the function knows where to write the file on the disk. And then you also have to feed it the JSON object containing all the data you want to write in the file. This function is going to be uh, responsible to convert that data into a string and then output it inside the text file. And then I have my two other variables as usual. You can ignore them if you don't need them. And that's it for the header file for now. Let's go in the CPP. And here I have my two functions, and I also included the header of the previous video, that way we can reuse uh, the previous functions. Uh, good, now let's start with the function that reads the JSON file. And the first step is actually super simple, we just have to start by reading the text file we receive as input. So here is the text file, we are trying to read it to uh, get its content, which is going to be a string that then we can convert to a JSON object. But if the reading of the file was not a success right here, we're simply going to return right away, because we don't want to try to convert it to a JSON, because there was a problem during the reading of the file, so we don't need to try to convert it. It's probably not gonna work anyway. And now it's time to convert the JSON string to a JSON object. And the first step is to create ourselves a variable that will receive the JSON object once, it, once it's created. And then we can ask the JSON serializer to deserialize the string right here. So right here we are deserializing the string and then saving the result inside the JSON object variable that we have right here. But for that to work, we have to include the JSON serializer right here at the top, which is inside the JSON module, which is not part of the default module, so we have to make sure to include it in the build.cs file right here. So I'm going to add the JSON modules inside my private dependencies. Here we go. So now it should compile properly. I can go back in the CPP file to continue the logic. And actually, we're pretty much done because if the conversion right here to a JSON object worked, uh, it means that we have our JSON object and the function is complete. But if it didn't work right here, I'm just going to tell the user that uh, the action didn't work and uh, we were not able to deserialize the JSON string to a JSON object. And the main reason for that is just that the string is not the right format. So maybe there's a typo in your JSON. Maybe the string is just not formatted properly. So that's why right here, I'm just going to return null pointer because anyway, the JSON object right here is probably invalid since the deserialization didn't work properly. But as I said, if the conversion worked right here, we should have a valid JSON object and we can simply return it to the user. We're done with this function. I'm also going to let the user know that the function was a success. And now for the function that writes the JSON file, it's as simple as doing the exact opposite of what we did right here. Instead of converting it to a JSON object, we have to convert it back to a string and then write it to a file. So let's move a little bit down right here and we're gonna start by creating ourselves a string to receive the result of the conversion. And then we can ask the JSON serializer right here to serialize the JSON object to convert it into a string. The string is the string variable that we have right here. So the result of that conversion is going to go inside the that variable we are using the JSON object we received as input, obviously. And if that conversion didn't work, I'm just going to tell the user that, well, it failed. Uh, we were not able to serialize the JSON to a string. And the main reason for that usually is just because the JSON object is not valid. So most of the time you should not have any issues converting JSON to JSON string if the JSON object is valid, obviously. So now that we converted the JSON object to a JSON string, we just have to write it into a text file the same way we did in the previous video. So we're simply going to reuse that function. So we're going to ask it to write the string to a file. The file is going to be the file of the JSON path, obviously. And then we're going to also feed it the JSON string we want to write inside the text file. And that's it. If that didn't work, I'm just going to return right here. But otherwise, I'm going to let the user know that it worked. So the operation was a success. We were able to write the JSON successfully. 
Okay, so that's nice and all, but okay, we have a function that writes a JSON object to a string, and then we have a function that converts the JSON file to a JSON object, but how do we use the JSON objects? Well, you can use it directly by calling all the functions that are inside the class, but honestly, I don't really like them. I think it's a big mess and it's not really fun to work with. Instead, we're going to use a structure, as I said in the beginning of the video, because it's way simpler than using the functions that are inside the JSON object class. So let's go back in the header file to create ourselves the new structure we're going to use. This structure is going to be available in Blueprint just so it's simpler for us to debug. So here it is, it is a Blueprint type and inside it, it contains a bunch of simple variables. So we have strings, boolean, float, integer, rotator, transform and other strings. So it's really just a bunch of simple variables so we can see the result. But here I have three categories of variables, these one, these ones and that one. Because if you want your variables to appear in the JSON, they have to at least be U properties. Otherwise, they are not going to be processed and converted to a JSON string. So this variable right here that I have at the bottom, it's not going to be in the JSON at all. And then I have these variables right here, which are U properties, so they are going to appear in the JSON. But since I want to easily be able to test in Blueprint, I also have another set of variables right here, and these ones are also Blueprint read, write, and edit anywhere. So we can see them in Blueprint, not only in C++. So in short, we have variables that are accessible in Blueprint and are going to be visible in the JSON. We have variables that are only accessible in C++ and they are also going to be visible in the JSON. And we have this variable right here, which is accessible in C++. You can use it in your code, but is never going to be in the JSON file. And now we have to use this structure to convert it to a JSON object and then write it into a file. So I'm just going to go down right here and create myself two new functions to wrap around these other functions that are using the JSON objects as input and output. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but using the structure instead. So I'm going to create myself my first function right here to read a structure from the file so I can feed it the file path that I want to read. And it's going to return the structure instead of a JSON object. And then I have the other function to write the structure to a JSON JSON file, so this time I'm feeding it the path of the file and also the structure I want to write inside the file. And these two new functions are going to be available in Blueprint, so it's easier to test. We can't really make those functions available in Blueprint, sadly, because they are using the JSON object, which are not really uh, available in Blueprint. Uh, and that's also why I think it's better to go through a structure to generate our JSONs. Okay, good. Now it's time to go do the logic inside the CPP. And we're going to start with the function that reads the structure from the file. And actually, the first step is to call the previous function we created, so the read JSON function. So let's read the JSON first. I'm reading the JSON, telling it the path of the file I want to read, and this is going to create a new JSON object for us. But before we are able to convert this JSON object to the structure, we have to make sure that it is valid. Otherwise, we don't really want to try to convert it because it's not going to work anyway. So if I was not able to read the file, I'm just going to return a default structure right here. But if I was able to read the file, the JSON object is going to be valid. And now we can try to convert it to a structure and that's actually super simple. We just have to ask Unreal to convert it for us. But as all the other conversion, we have to first create the variable that will receive the result of the conversion. And then we can ask Unreal to convert it for us. Uh, this time we're going to use the JSON object converter class, which we don't have included yet. So let's just include it. And since that class is inside another module, we have to also include it in the build.cs. So let's go back in there and I have it right here. I have my JSON utilities added in my dependencies. Perfect. Now we can go back in the CPU and look at the function. So right here we are asking the JSON object converter to convert the object to a structure. That's good. That's straightforward. Then we also have to tell it which structure we want it to create. So here it is. I have my new structure that we just created and that's the type of variable we want to retrieve from that conversion. And then we can feed it the JSON object right here and then the variable that will receive the structure when the conversion is done. But if the conversion failed, well, I'm just going to tell my user that I was not able to read the JSON file because I was not able to convert the JSON object to a structure. And the main reason for that is maybe you try to convert the wrong structure. Uh, let's say you tried to read a JSON file that contained a color as a structure inside it, and then you try to convert it to the new structure we just created, which is not at all the same format. It's not going to work. So you really have to read a file that has the right structure written inside it, obviously. And here I'm just going to return a default structure if it's the case, if the conversion didn't work. But if the conversion worked well we're done we just have to tell the user that the operation was a success and we were able to read the structure from the JSON file and then I'm just going to return the structure as output obviously 
And that's it for this function. Now we're going to work on the last function of today. And it is the function to write the structure directly to a JSON file. And actually this function is the simplest one by far. So first, uh, the first step is to convert the structure to a JSON object. That's super simple. We just have to ask the JSON object converter to convert the structure to a JSON object. And that's it. We have the JSON object. Then I'm just going to check to make sure that the JSON object is valid. So if the conversion worked properly. So if it failed, the JSON object is going to be null. And then we can tell the user that it was a fail. We were not able to write the JSON file because we were not able to convert the structure to a JSON object. That should not really happen. I don't really see the reason why this would happen, but if it happens, well, the user is going to know it. And that brings us to the last step of the function, which is simply to call the write JSON function. We can tell it the path of the file we want to write and feed it the JSON object we just created from the structure. And that's it. Now we're done with the code and we can jump in Unreal to test all that. So in Unreal, I created myself a simple interface, so it's simpler to test. Uh, so here I have a little text field in which I can write the path of the file I want to read or write. And then under that, I have a bunch of variables, which are the same variables that are inside the structure. So I have the string variable right here, the boolean variable, and then I have the float variable and the int variable. And we're going to use these variables to either write them in the JSON file or read the content of the JSON file. And then I have two buttons to either read or write the JSON file. And then I'm going to go in the graph to see how the code is called. And that's actually super simple right here. To read the JSON file, I'm simply calling the read JSON file function using the path written in the text field. And then I'm taking the output, which is the structure that was generated and showing it inside the widget. And then for the function that writes the JSON file, I'm doing the opposite. So I'm calling the write structure JSON file function, feeding in the path of the file, obviously, and also the structure, which is coming from what is written inside the user interface. Perfect. So now let's go try to see if it works. And now the first thing I'm going to try uh, here, you can see on the top right corner that my text file doesn't exist. My temp folder is completely empty. So what happens if I try to read the file? Well, it's not able to read the file because the file doesn't exist, obviously. And then I'm just going to write the file to see if it works. It says that it works. And here on the top right, we can see that the file just appeared. I'm going to load it inside the visual code to see the content. And here it is. We can see all the four variables uh, right here that we have in the user interface. And for reference, I'm just going to open uh, Visual Studio real quick right here. And we can see that these are the four variables that we have available in Blueprint. I'm not able to change uh, the other variables in Blueprint because they are not available in Blueprint. That's why I only have those four variables inside my user interface. Then we have the other variables right here, the three variables that are only available in C++ and in JSON. We can see that they are in the JSON. So I have my vector, rotator, and the transform. And they are using the same values that we have in the C++. That's good. And finally, we have that one last variable variable right here that should not be in the JSON at all. So I'm just going to scroll at the bottom completely. And we can see that it's not there. The variable is not in the JSON at all because it's not a U properties. You can still use it in C++, but it's not going to be written in the JSON files. Okay, good. Now let's go back in Unreal and let's see what happens if I try to modify my variables that I have right here. So I'm just going to change the values a little bit and write them into the file. And we can see that they were changed properly. So that's good. And we can do the opposite. So I can remove a few variables right here to modify the values. Here we go. And I'm just going to save. And then if I read the files, we can see that the values were updated properly. So that's good. The last thing I want to test is to, let's say, make a typo in the JSON. So I'm just going to remove a bracket right here. And now if I try to read the file, yes, it complained. It was not able to convert the JSON string to a JSON object because there's probably a typo in it. It's not, or it's not the right format. In this case, there's a typo. I can see it. There's one missing bracket right here. And you can also see that when that happened, I'm returning the default JSON with the default values that I'm setting inside the structure. Perfect. So now we should be able to write and read all the JSON style we want. And that should be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.